Hello again and welcome back to the Mark IV Sterling Engine Project. Um, so the last week or so I've been beavering away once again to try and uh, remedy some of the uh, apparent issues of this engine. Um, I've made some changes um, so I'll just take you over those right now. So the heat exchanger um, was bowing in a little bit just, just due to the heat. Um, so what I've made is I've made this comb shaped thing and I'm actually just going to get the hammer and bash that in. On the bulkhead between the um, the hot piston assembly um, and inside the heat exchanger, um, I poured a slurry of uh, fire clay in there um, in an effort to try and insulate the steel work a little bit so less heat is transferred to the seal. So this is being inserted into the heat exchangers. Um, uh, somebody gave me this idea, so thank you very much for that. Uh, it's um, So the three reasons is to cut down on dead space, uh, create a more regenerative kind of effect um, by uh, having more uh, surface area available um, and also creating turbulent air or more turbulent air as the air passes through the heat exchangers. Um, this will help with the uh, um, conduction of uh, the heat into the air and the extraction of the uh, heat from the air as well. Right, so this is the next um, version of the seal that I'm going to try. So this one here is in fact made out of Kevlar. Um, my dad got a, a big sheet and off cut on eBay. Um, I've cut it into four pieces. So I've laid it up using silicon sealant to stick it all together. Um, this stuff is obviously incredibly strong because it's uh, it can stop a bullet. Also, it's temperature resistant to about 400 degrees. On the cold side, um, I've got the same sort of thing, but I'm just using standard cotton canvas. Um, on this one, I've got three layers because the cotton canvas is a bit thicker. So um, I've drilled holes here. Um, this is to uh, provide a bit more cooling on the hot air, um, hot end of the um, engine. Um, so the holes are obviously let, let heat out. Um, the, the other thing the holes do is they stop the uh, heat passage uh, or the transfer of heat through the metal quite as much. Someone gave me this idea to um, put in a piece of elastic between the two levers um, or the other option was a spring um, which um, is more efficient as I'm told. The idea is that the um, when you turn the engine over and once the pressure is built up inside um, via the non-return valve it's actually really easy to turn over so now it's actually balanced so the pressure is balanced against this uh, piece of elastic here which I think is a great idea actually. Not mine, obviously. See how easy I can turn that over now? So that, that'll be interesting to see what difference that makes. Right, so there you go. So that's all the uh, all the changes I've made to the engine. Only very subtle changes, um, but I'm hoping now they're, they're gonna make a fair difference. Uh, it's getting a bit late this evening now to actually do any testing. So I'll probably wait till tomorrow um, and I'll drag the engine out and give it a go. Look at those silent. Yeah, it's lovely spice. Silent. Oh, I don't put it on the I just. Uh... Right, so um, everything's still good. Um, I'm going to do a quick power run again. Uh, we're not going to do a full power run. Uh, we're going to measure from about 200 to, well, perhaps 100 RPM to about 400 RPM. Right, so we're just warming the engine up. Make sure the fire is as hot as possible. Hopefully the heat exchanger won't melt when we do it. Right, so we're, we'll start at 100. So I'm going to slow this up until we get to 100 using the brake. So we're going to be a bit quick here. Actually, 100 is fairly slow. We we'll start at 200. Just wait for things to settle down a little bit. Of course, the slower the engine goes, uh, the more heat is left in the hot heat exchanger. So the torque of the engine should actually uh, increase until equilibrium. Right about that up. One point three. 
Right, one point three one ounces. Right, so I can measure the temperatures now. It's been running for quite a few hours now. So, so the laser point is on the outside clamp. So we've got about 150. Seal's about 150, 155. Um, if they put the laser right over the actual closest to the furnace, we're seeing about 200 there. So we got a fair, fairly nice drop in temperature. All right, so the outside of the case in the furnace is about 150 degrees. Um, the first bit of the, the cold side is about 160 degrees, 170. Uh, halfway along, it's about 60 degrees. And right on the cold side, it's about 50 degrees. One thing that's nice to see is the stability of the pistons is uh, quite nice now. Because the fabric is pulled tight on the uh, in and out of the stroke, uh, it seems to have stabilised things, so hopefully that will uh, last uh, last now. <laughs> there is a slight squeak coming from somewhere. I think it's one of the bearings. We tried tightening everything up, but there's still a squeak. Um, I think I got a, clear a clearance issue on one of the spacer washers. I'm sure that can be solved at some point. Right, we've been running for four hours now. Um, the fire is dying down. The seals are still intact, which is a nice thing. So this is a Teflon seal on this side. This is a cotton seal on this side. One thing, um, I did my best to try and get them as tight as possible on the instroke, um, but they're still, they still a bit puffy, which might be robbing us power. I don't suppose they're stretching a great deal, um, but I do wonder whether I can make some kind of um, like ring ring at the correct angle to go around um, the hot and cold side. Um, so that might be something for the future. So here's the test results. Um, no increase in power. Um, but the results are a bit more steady, so that's one good thing. Um, so the maximum power was at 250 RPM and 300 RPM. So once again, 45 watts. So there you go, that's the fun for the day. Uh, so on a positive note, um, the diaphragm seal lasted. So that's the Kevlar diaphragm seal, um, four layers thick, uh, layered with silicon as well to seal the fabric. Uh, that seemed to last particularly well. Um, so that's quite a good thing really. Uh, the engine is now incredibly um, quiet, so, um, <laughs> so that's quite a good thing. Um, still a bit work to do on the power-wise. Um, we're only getting 45 watts still, which is um, pretty bad, really. Um, I do wonder whether a lot of the issue is down to the actual um, the rocket stove again. Even though rocket stove creates a lot of, lot of heat, um, it doesn't actually create a lot of radiant heat, which is, um, seems to be what's needed to transfer uh, heat um, to steel items. Um, then onto the air inside the engine. Um, that, that's just me hunch at the moment um, compared to other Sterling engines that um, certainly work much better and um, engines I've built before that also work much better. Right, so uh, so I've got a few more um, ideas to try, so I'll, I'll do those in the next video. Um, Till next time, bye-bye.